Say, excuse me. Ma'am? Are those your children? Are you waiting for something? Hello, hello, my name is Armando and welcome to Neon Links Productions. So I've been wanting to make this video for all, especially after WandaVision ended. Mostly because I thought that Ralph Bonham was a pretty weird character um, and a very peculiar creative decision. I feel like people were justifiably annoyed by him. Mostly because I feel like we were all expecting some grand story that connected to the multiverse and brought in the X-Men. Now I still think there's an in-story canon explanation as to why Evan Peters is playing Ralph Bonner, aka not Quicksilver, right? Um, but before I get there, let me just clear up a few things. So first, why Ralph Bonner? Like Ralph Bonner? Why is there this rando character named Ralph Bonner? So first and foremost, the name is a reference to Bonus the Bone, a character from Growing Pains. Richard Milhouse Stubble. A character that Matt Shackman, the director of WandaVision, used to play. <laughs> Yes, it was meant to be a joke because boner. But it did feel strange that it was just a joke, at least when it happened and when the whole series ended, right? Why would it be just a joke? Why go through the trouble of hiring Evan Peters in the first place if he wasn't gonna be the actual Quicksilver? This is what really pissed people off. Quicksilver is here, but he's not Quicksilver. Oh yes, he is. Just a different one. But in the end, we all knew he really wasn't. He was just some dude named Ralph Bonner, which partly makes sense because there already is a Pietro Maximoff in the MCU. He's just, you know, dead. But what didn't make sense to all of us is that this Quicksilver didn't look like Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver. He looked like the Quicksilver from Fox's X-Men Universe's Quicksilver. I mean, Wanda brought Vision back from the dead, right? So why didn't she do the same thing with... Aaron Taylor Johnson's version of her brother. And that's where these questions start popping up. Is Ralph Boner just <clears throat> Quicksilver but he's under some kind of mind control? Is he is he from the multiverse but just another version of Quicksilver that doesn't know he's Quicksilver? Basically, is he connected to the multiverse? And I'm sure Kevin Feige and all the other writers and producers at Marvel did all their research to make sure that um, everything is going well and everything's fine and the continuity makes sense, right? They do extensive research and now they've been having multiple staff meetings so that all the writers can be on the same page. Yes, the MCU stories are complex but they still have to make sense, right? At least without too many plot holes. So looking at this creatively, I think it was a good decision to leave out Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver. Because for one, it did confuse Wanda and all of us about whether this guy really is Quicksilver and who he is in the first place, right? We were all She recast Pietro? We were also confused about the world she was living in. Like, is this real or not? Because I mean, we know that's Quicksilver, but that's not actually Quicksilver. But she also knew that and she, she was just as confused, maybe. What happened to your accent? What happened to yours? Second, Aaron's Quicksilver is dead, and Agatha said, her, said so herself that she could not bring somebody from the dead, plus not to mention someone whose dead body is in a different continent, right? Necromancy was a non-starter since your real brother's body is on another continent, not to mention full of holes. Three, I think creatively it just would have taken a lot of emotional impact from Vision returning and then eventually having to leave and for her children who were also just brand new characters right and it would have just thrown the whole story off because <clears throat> then you would have been focusing more on her brother coming back and vision coming back instead of vision mysteriously being back and that you know adds on to this whole other mystery of there being this other white vision so vision's part had an explanation the kids part was meant to be her moving on and trying to create the family that she was previously planning out with Vision. And fourth, as a reason, this show played a lot on TV tropes. 
and I think having Evan Peters Quicksilver was a cool way to play on the trope of crossovers that TVs used to have because he literally came from one t franchise to another franchise that you know still are kind of related to each other and still connect in some way even though they're you know owned by different people but anyway you might still go and be like but this is still not that Quicksilver this can't be a X-Men cross crossover if you don't have the X-Men, right? Duh. So why does he look the same? Is he connected to the multiverse? And the answer, I believe, is yes. He is actually a doppelganger. He's a doppelganger because we know that for one, he doesn't have powers. The powers come from Agatha's charm necklace that he was wearing. So I do believe that he was just a guy named Ralph Boner. And he himself probably won't be returning to the MCU. However, I do think that him being a doppelganger as well allowed for Agatha to channel him and use his body as uh, a Quicksilver in this universe. So I think further down the line, we're going to know more about doppelgangers and Nexus beings. And I think it's important to know about doppelgangers so that way you can have a distinction between uh, just regular people who, you know, have different lives. And I want to make this distinction quick first because Wanda is a Nexus being. You know that commercial that was talking about the Nexus pill and like grounding herself with her reality and making sure that she checks with her doctor. You should not take Nexus unless your doctor has cleared you to move on with your life. That was a reference to the multiverse that was supposed to tie in Doctor Strange. How unfortunately we didn't get that part. But in the comics Wanda is a Nexus being and basically Nexus beings are people that are the same no matter which universe you pick and choose. Unlike Nexus beings, however, doppelgangers can be can look like the same person, but they're different people entirely. They have different lives and personalities and abilities and characteristics. And so we have our first Nexus being, Wanda, and we have one of our first few doppelgangers being Quicksilver and Ralph Boner. So believe it or not, I do believe doppelgangers and Nexus beings have already been introduced into the MCU and they will continue popping up, especially throughout Phase 4. So our first example of the doppelganger is obviously Evan Peters. He was Quicksilver in the X-Men franchise for the 21st century Fox's universe and he was also Ralph Boner or Fake Pietro, Pietro, if you will. But in WandaVision. We also have Mahershala Ali who has played Cottonmouth in Luke Cage and will also be playing Blade in the upcoming Blade movie that MCU is making. We also have Gemma Chan who played Minerva in Captain Marvel and she also will be playing another upcoming character as Cersei in The Eternals. But wait! There's more! We also have Michelle Yu who's going to be playing a character in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. But she also played a Ravager in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And then we also have Laura Haddock, who played this random fangirl in the 1940s in the first Captain America movie. And she was Meredith Quill, aka Peter Quill's mom, in Guardians of the Galaxy. And to even add on to this, Sony just announced that Aaron Taylor Johnson is going to be playing Kraven the Hunter, aka one of Spider-Man's villains in some either upcoming movie that's going to be just for him as a solo movie or some maybe crossover project with Spider-Man. So if Aaron Taylor Johnson is going to be playing Craven the Hunter, then he's technically going to be also a doppelganger. You didn't see that coming? So another big nexus being that the MCU has already given us is actually J. Jonah Jameson. He's the same dude that he was in the Sam Raimi movies as he is now in the MCU movies basically. But we'll also probably be getting new nexus characters from the Defenders unless they, you know, they're very changed differently then I guess they won't be called nexus beings. They can still be doppelgangers even though they'll still be the same people but yeah, but for sure J. Jonah Jameson is also one of these few Nexus beings and um, yeah, Sony's already given us these people. Even before it, it was considered Phase 4, we got our first Nexus being in our last Phase 3 project. So in conclusion, Ralph Boner is just a doppelganger and I think he was just a hint and a clue to all these other Nexus beings and other doppelgangers that we'll be seeing later on in the future, especially with Phase 4 because there's gonna be a lot of like 
weird mix matching and then there's secret invasion that's going to be popping out so i feel like that's just going to add on to the confusion of who is who and who's from where and i think this is definitely going to be leading up to secret wars because there you do have different characters from different universes and i think having ralph boner here is just a promise that we will see fox's version of quicksilver in the mcu and how if that doesn't happen maybe we'll have other spider-man come in from the other universes or even maybe the old Fant fantastic four characters because i kind of like those guys or even the characters from the marvel tv projects please bring it quick anyway that's about it that's my theory what do you think do you think this is a clue to the multiverse do you think evan peters is going to show back up for secret wars um give me your theories like and subscribe share do all the things and I will continue coming out with more. And if he's going to be in the Sony's MCU characters, Sony's characters of MCU people, whatever, SP, let me look it up. I looked it up. It's called the SPUMC. Are you serious?